So again, talking what's an acid and base today. And we'll talk about some strong acids, our two major types, the binary and the oxo acids. So what defines these, what makes a strong acid a strong acid? We say that they completely dissociate in water. So, you know, like associate means to come together, dissociate, they come apart. So, basically what this means is that all of the hydrogen completely splits off of whatever it's attached to. They always split up. It's 100% dissolving in solution. So, for example, we got this guy, HCl, better known as hydrochloric acid, yeah? Hydrochloric acid. All of those H's fully split off from those CL's. They are 100% dissolving. That's what makes them strong. They lose those H pluses, which makes them reactive. Another example of a strong one is HBr. We've never even talked about this one, but maybe you guys can guess the name. What would we call this one? Yeah, hydrobromic acid. Same deal. That H plus fully splits off. Completely dissociates. And then we got HI. Hydrobiotic acid. Hydroiotic. So that's one major group. The binary acids. Two parts, binary. Two chemicals. Two individual atoms. Or ions. Our oxo acids are going to have, like their name would imply, oxygen. Yeah. So first one, HNO3. What do we call this one? Nitric. This is the acid that really breaks down metals easily. So if you want to dissolve a metal, nitric acid is your, is your guy to do it. H2SO4. What's this one? Sulfuric. Sulfuric. Thank you. Sulfuric acid. This one, if you want to break down organics, this is your guy. So if you want to break down something that's made of carbon, big long carbon chains, this is the one to do it. I have a really good demo with, hydro with sulfuric acid. Maybe I should, I I'll set it up, it's really good. It shows what it does to things made of carbon pretty dramatically. And then the last one, I don't think you've heard of this one, HClO4. <coughs> this is called perchloric acid. This one I'm not as familiar with. I'll have to get back to you on some of the facts about that. Okay, so those are strong acids. Completely dissociated water. So then we got our weak acids. What we say about these ones is they don't dis dissociate well. They don't dissociate well. What I mean by that is that very few hydro hydrogen ions are going to break off. So it's going to stay relatively together in solution. Those H pluses aren't going to come off. Not as many H pluses come off, so it's just not as, it's not as strong. Not as many of those H pluses to react to things in the solution. Here's some weak acids. Um, let's see if you know this one. HC2H3O2. What's that? 
acetate. So we call this, what's that? Acetic acid. So acetic acid, more commonly known as vinegar. So this is the acid that makes pickles taste sour. Ketchup not so sweet. Ketchup would be really gross if you didn't even have the vinegar in it. It would just be sweet. Can you imagine just sugary tomatoes? Yeah. How about this one? HF. You guys know that what that one's called? Hydrofluoric, yeah. Any folks watch Breaking Bad at all? Okay, well, never mind this one. This one eats bone. So this is real bad news. If it, it actually can go dissolve through your flesh and dissolve bone. Which is just, this is bad news. So someone asked me the question earlier today. I thought you said these are weak acids. So weak acids does not mean they're not reactive. They're not dangerous. So just because it's a weak acid does not mean it does not react with things. In this case, hydrofluoric acid is a very dangerous acid. Very dangerous stuff. Yes? I don't understand why the strong beers are being shown here because the strong ones are weak in the sense that they break apart. Ah, I see what you're saying. So, what, what, yeah, why they say they're strong is just because, like, you think of like the H plus as the, the coming in solution is what the reactive part is. Mm -hmm. That's why they get the strong, so that it just releases a lot of those. So, it doesn't take very much of these guys to have a big impact. Whereas these guys, you need to have a lot higher concentration of them in solution to get them to have the effect. So that's kind of what it is. Like, I can have very little hydrochloric acid and can have a massive effect. Whereas even though hydrofluoric is a very dangerous acid, I would need more of it to be reactive. They actually had a spill at this when I was at uh, Stevens Point uh, in, the, in the chem labs there over the summer. They had to evacuate the building. They had a little spill of it. So it's, it's, it's bad news. Not fun stuff. And then here's one other one. HNO2, nitrous acid. It's like a weaker counterpart than nitric acid. So weak does not mean safe. <coughs> Strong does not necessarily mean dangerous. For example, your stomachs are full of hydrochloric acid, right? You got your the bile, the most common component is hydrochloric acid. That's what we use to digest things. Okay, let's do the flip side here. Let's talk about the strong bases. Same defining characteristic for these guys. They completely dissociate in water. I'm going to write a few of them down and ask you guys what is the defining characteristic for all these strong bases. I already heard it. Yeah, they have hydroxide. So every single one of these strong bases has the anion hydroxide in it. So that's what defines a strong, strong base. So anything with a hydroxide is a strong base. So you got lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. All of them are losing these hydroxides off of it. They completely dissolve in water. NaOH, the this is this is stuff the stuff that's in Drano, drain cleaner. Real strong chemical, uh, and also more commonly known as lye. Have you ever heard of seen the words L Y E, letters L Y E? That's that's sodium hydroxide. So when you see that, that's what that means. They actually use it in soap making, like traditional soap making. Sodium hydroxide. And then we're going to talk about one weak base. There's more, but this will be the primary one we work with. NH3. Anyone know this one's name? Close. Ammonia. This is the non-ion uh, version of 
ammonia. Yeah, ammonia. So this is what's in Windex. Prime is the active, active ingredient in there. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, if you mix this guy, ammonia, with this guy, NaHClO, sodium hypochlorite, you get this, which is which is a yeah chlorine gas, which is poison, will kill you. It's a big, bad, very 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 bad stuff. This is what they used during World War One to gas people. One of the one of the things they would use as chem for chemical war warfare. So this is no this is no joke. This stuff. That's why you gotta be careful with your cleaning products. A lot of a lot of strong chemicals in there. Don't just mix stuff. Oh, these two are good strong chemicals. Maybe if I mix them together, I can make something even stronger. No, 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 no. <laughs> not like making, not like working in the kitchen, making food stuff. More, more dangerous than that. Okay, so we've been kind of throwing these terms, acids and bases, around. We've never really actually defined them, right? We just say this is an acid, this is a base. It completely dissociates in water. It doesn't completely dissociate in water. And... If I asked you guys right now, how would you define an acid or a base? Like, you guys have talked about acids and bases probably since some probably part of elementary school, right? Like, all, all the way through middle school science, even your freshman year. If I want to know what an acid is, if I just looked at it, how do I know? How do I know it's an acid? Just looking at it, how do I know it's an acid? I saw HCl. How do I know it's an acid? How we define that? I'm curious for you guys. You get thought about it. Yeah, yeah. The first, yeah, first. Oh, the OH on there, the, yeah. hy the hydroxide? Yeah. yeah. And if you said that, that is that is our first definition of what an acid ba and base is. That's what they call the Arrhenius acid and base, the Arrhenius definition. So this is a way we could use to de define acids and bases. So Arrhenius acids and bases, your acids, they give off a hydrogen. They start with a hydrogen. So we put them in water, you get an H+. Bases... They're going to give off a hydroxide in water. So that's the, that's the simplest definition of an acid and base. But the pro there's a problem with it, though. It works for all the acids, right? All those ones up there, we can see that all those H's on the front end. The B's all these strong bases, it works with the hydroxide. What's the issue here? That knows there's no hydroxide in here. So that's why, if you put this in solution, though, it's going to the pH is going to shoot up. It's going to turn basic. It's going to be a pH of 10 or 11. So a better way we can use this definition. Well, slash that. Who are my German speakers in here? Okay. Pronounce this name. <laughs> no thanks. Brunstead. Got that umlaut on there, yeah. And how about the last part? What would you call that? Brunstead. I got some German club people in here, don't I? I've seen you guys with your shirts on. Come on. Oh what? <sighs> so Brunstead Laurie, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so what what these guys said is that acids are what we call proton donors. Proton donors. So think about this like what a hydrogen atom really is, or what a hydrogen ion is. So here's hydrogen atom. 
What's a hydrogen ion look like? It's missing an electron. It just lost an electron. So that's like basically an H plus ion. It's a proton. It's just a proton. It's a naked proton by itself. Then what we say bases are, they're proton acceptors. So instead of saying that they have to give up a hydroxide, this guy, ammonia, can actually pick up an H plus and turn to ammonia, turn to NH4. And then because it's pulling H pluses away, it's actually creating hydroxides in solution. So it's a better, it's, it's just a more inclusive definition. There's one more definition called a Lewis acid, and that has to do with electrons. Now we're not going to talk about that because you won't even cover that in your first college chem class. We'll talk about that in other chem, organic chem, if you guys get there. So that's about two, three chem classes down the road before you get to Lewis acid. But there is other, but that's why I want to state there are other definitions for chem. Okay. So this is our definition we're going to use. Moving on. So what happens in solution? We're going to set up what we call dissociation equations. And what these are going to be is they're going to be equilibrium reactions with acids and bases. So equilibrium, last unit's not going away. We're just going to do it in the context of acids and bases. We'll start off by looking at a weak acid. What happens in solution? So we got our weak acid, hydrofluoric. It's going to combine with water. We're going to place it in solution. And when this dissociates, what's it going to turn into? What's one thing you're going to get from it? That hydrogen's gonna come off, but also you're gonna come off with your fluoride, right? It turns out that H does not just stay by a proton by itself. What it actually does is it hooks up with a water molecule and becomes H3O. H3O plus ion called hydronium. So that's really what acids create in solution. They don't create just free-floating hydrogen ions. The H actually splits up and combines with this water to form something called hydronium, hydronium ion. And sometimes we'll just say H plus because it's more easy to pronounce. It's easier to say hydronium. So there's a way of labeling these. So we say that in all these reactions, we're going to have an acid and base. So Obviously, HF is our acid. Then what's the water going to have to be? The base. Thank you very much. So yeah, the water is going to be, be our base. So again, with our definition, acids are proton donate donors, bases are proton acceptors. If we look at the other side of the reaction, what we say F is now, we call this our conjugate base. So every acid has a conjugate base. Now that fluorine ion, see that's a proton acceptor now. This could pick up an H plus and go back the other way. Again, this is an equilibrium reaction, goes in both ways, so we can acid and base on both sides. So now, Water is the base on this side, and when it becomes hydronium, we call this the conjugate acid. So for every acid and base, there's a conjugate pair. So we're dealing with equilibrium. It's a two-way reaction. Okay, let's see an example of a strong acid. Now. Yeah, you guys can start labeling. HNO3, <coughs> fine 
combining with H2O. And these are all little L's right here for liquid. I'm just putting the phase on there. So again, this is going to dissociate in water, so we're going to get NO3. And that H is going to combine with the H2O to form H3O, our hydronium ion. So let's label these pairs. HNO3 is our acid, and then what we call the NO3. That's our conjugate base. I'll draw that little line connecting. That's our conjugate base. That's our conjugate pair right there. And then water. This is accepting a proton, so this is our base. And hydronium is our conjugate acid. Because now notice that hydronium can donate an H plus. We've got two way reactions. We're dealing with equilibrium, acid and base on both sides. Okay, moving on to weak base. NH3, got our water. So NH3 is our base this time, so therefore the water has to be the acid. So now water is going to act like an acid. What's NH3 going to turn into over here? If a if the base is a proton acceptor. So it'll be NH4. Yeah, it's picked up a hydrogen. Now it's turned into ammonia. Ammonium. Bases are proton acceptors. The that hydrogen has to come from somewhere. Where it comes from is water or acid. Acids donate protons, so water turns into hydroxide. So this is our hydroxide ion. What are we going to call NH4? Conjugate acid, yeah. Because now it's something that could donate a hydrogen. Or hydronium proton, excuse me. And then hydronium is our, or hydroxide, excuse me, is our base then. One last one. Strong, our strong base. And this one looks a little funny. So we'll take our quintessential base here, NaOH. So we combine with water. What happens to NaOH when it goes into solution? It breaks apart. So we're going to have an Na, <coughs> and we're just going to have an OH. What's going to happen to water? What's that? Say, say it one more time. <laughs> so this is actually weird. It doesn't have to break apart. Because you've already released that hydroxide, it just stays, just it stays water. So what we call water in this case, you guys might remember this term from, um, Doing ionic net, net ionic equations at all a little bit. We call this a spectator. Because it actually doesn't participate in the reaction. It's just a medium for it to work in. So when you guys write these ones out, you just have 
your base. So that's all you get. You get your base, and really you can, there's not really a conjugate acid with this one at all. There's no proton donor. Okay, one last thing to talk about. So notice how water acted like a base and an acid up here. <coughs> Water's a really special compound in many ways. We call water this term called amphiprotic. Amphiprotic. which means it acts like it donates and accepts protons. It's like the word amphibian, right? Ampha, prefix, lives on land, lives on water. The last thing I want to show you is when you set up your expressions for these. So remember last unit we did our uh, equilibrium expressions. In this unit we're going to have what we call Ka and Kb expressions. <laughs> Ka for acid expressions, B for base expressions. So let's, and you're going to do these for weak acids and weak bases. I'll explain why tomorrow. So if I want to do a equilibrium expression for the reaction above here, or weak acid one, hydrofluoric acid, how would that look? How would we set up that? It's just, and I'll tell you right away, right now, it's exactly the same as equilibrium expressions last unit. It's just with acids and bases. So what goes on top here? They're products. What are our two products? Say that again. Oh, uh, we're, we're gonna do we're gonna do this one, the weak acid one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll put fluorine, uh, fluoride and hydronium up on top, and then what's gonna go on the bottom? And it turns out we're just gonna put the hydrofluoric, and the reason what is. You remember that the whole thing about least restrictive state? We had that hierarchy that gases were the most, were least restrictive, followed by aqueous, followed by liquid. And you all had to always go with the least restrictive straight state when you did your equilibrium expressions. We don't include the liquid. We just do the aqueous stuff. So you won't include the water in here. So yeah, that's, it's the, the expression is the same way. We just don't include water because it's not in the same state as the rest of them. Let's do the weak base one from above. What's going to be on top for that one? NH4. NH4, yeah. NH4 and hydroxide. And then the bottom. NH3. Yeah, just the NH3. So we don't include the liquids on here. Liquid, not, whoops, let me rewrite that. Yeah, only include the aqueous in there. The reason is because we really can't change the concentration of water in there appreciably. There's so much water in solution compared to these guys <laughs> that we really can't appreciably change the concentration. That's why we don't, that's why we don't. Okay, you should have enough information to complete worksheet one, problems one through six. So you guys can take some time to work on those. Problems one through six on worksheet one. And then tomorrow you need those calculators again because we're doing equilibrium expressions and equilibrium problem solving.